C. Lindelof videos, AP Calculus and Particle Motion. How can you use your graph and calculator to help you get a 5 on the exam? This stuff is actually pretty straightforward. This question happens to be off the 2003 exam, and it says a particle moves along the x-axis, so its velocity at any time t is given by the velocity function v of t is equal to the opposite of the quantity t plus 1 times sine of t squared over 2. We're asked to, this is what I really suggest you kind of read through the whole thing. So here we're asked to find the uh, acceleration of the particle at t equals 2. We're asked, is the speed increasing? But if you go down to the next question, it says, find all times in the interval t is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3 when the particle changes its direction. Justify your answer. Uh, the last part says, if the particle starts at the right of the origin, at the origin at t equals 0, on which side of the origin will the particle be at t is equal to 2? Justify your answer. No problem. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this in one fell swoop, I think. I think I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to put this thing in as a piecewise function, and I'm just going to work off the graph. So piecewise functions are right in this little directory right here. If you see square brackets, that those are matrices. But if you see brackets that look like this, they're... Um, piecewise function and the one that has the most and it gives you the most possibilities so here it asks you how many pieces you want you just want a one piece here and then I'm gonna put that in I'm gonna put in negative one times the quantity X plus one times sign you can put in sign lots of where you can type it in or you can just go here and put it in as sign control division and it was X squared over 2. I can hear somebody out there going, Charlie, but didn't it say that, <clears throat> didn't it say, wasn't this thing in terms of t? Yeah, but the calculator may not graph it correctly if I use t as the variable, so I use x if that's okay with you. I use my tab key. I use my tab key here to get over to this, and then I'm going to put in that interval that we wanted, which was, let me take a quick look, forgive me, less than 3, right? less than three so I'm gonna do that go back here so I have zero controllers to X and X is less than or equal to three check this out for a second this is kind of important you have to hit a tab to get out of that little box and then I'm gonna hit control store and remember this is our velocity function so velocity so here's our velocity function. Enter. So far, so good. Here's this really cool thing that you can do. Um, you can go to menu, go to calculus, go to calculus, go to derivative, x, skip over here, put in vx, and we know that the first derivative of velocity is acceleration, right? So all I'm going to do is go back up to here like this. Control, well, I'm just going to hit enter. And then I'm going to hit here, Control Store, and I'm going to say this is my acceleration function, A of X. All right, Enter. Now let's go back and look at our questions for a second. We have all this crap in our calculator. It says find the acceleration at T equals 2. All right, so we want to know at T equals 2. So we want acceleration, so acceleration at T equals 2 is A of 2 equals, that looks like crap, but look, so we have that answer. Go back for a second to this. And the first part of A asks us that question. So A, A of 2 is equal to 1.588. It says, so is the speed of the particle increasing at t equals 2? Well, if speed is increasing, this is important, then the sign of acceleration and the sign of velocity will match. So all we have to do is go back here to our calculator and, and evaluate v of 2, right? Because we saved our velocity function. v of 2 is, just to be sure, is negative. That's, I don't give a crap what this number is. It's negative, right? So I say this. Particle, particles, speed, decreasing because 
a of 2 is greater than 0, but v of 2 is less than 0. Signs don't match. That's a great explanation. All right? And then we're asked here, we say, to find all times on this interval, t is greater than 0 but less than 3, when the particle changes direction. So we have this. We have t, v of t. Let me move my v of t out here. Let me v of t. And this is 0, and this is 3, isn't it? But check this out. It gets really easy. Go back to my calculator. I go to the graphs, and I graph v of x. v of x. <clears throat> and we can see clearly that it changes direction here, right here, doesn't it? And the way to look at that is just to analyze the graph. Analyze the graph for the zero. It says lower bound. It means to the left of the point you're looking for. So here's a point to the left. Here's a point to the right. So it's at 2.51. Uh, the only problem I guess I have with that is this. It says 2.51 here, and it's not out to enough decimal places. So you might have to go back to your calculator. Go to calculator. And then you just type in the solve function, S-O-L-V-E, solve, V of X equals zero. Important, comma, X, which means in terms of X, enter, control, and you can see, if you go over here, you have to go actually go here, and go over. I actually would use that 2.51, I guess, at this point. But here it is right here. Yeah, you see it coming? 2.5. When I'm just hitting my right cursor. And it's 2.506 because they want it to that many places. So when T is 2.506, it's 0. <clears throat> right? So we want to know what happens here, and just by going back and looking at our graph, we can see we can see from our graph that everywhere from 0 to 2.5, the velocity is negative, which means the thing is moving left, doesn't it? So we can say that. We can definitely say that, that from 0 to 2.5, 2.51, Find all times in the interval so it says find all times in the interval t is greater than or equal to 0 t is less than or equal to 3 when the particle changes direction well it changes direction here so this is your proof this graph is your proof right this is moving left this is moving right this is rest. Okay? So find all times when the particle changes direction at t equals 2.506. C. <clears throat> this is really, really easy, isn't it? It says if the particle starts at, at the origin at t equals 0, on which side will it be at t equals 2? Well, a particle will be on the left. On left of origin because it only moves left in the first two seconds. C graph above. And that's my answer. So I hope this is really helpful. This stuff is not super difficult. And whatever time we just spent talking our way through this, you're going to have three times that much time to actually get your answer. So have a strategy and be able to use your technology well. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do.